Hey everyone, I wanted to do a quick video on how I set up my mastermind, uh, my mastermind PBC uh, on the editor for um, for Mac, or you know, that's what I use. <laughs> Don't have a PC. So let's run through all of these um, these pages here, and I'll show you how I set that up and how I set up my set list and, and songs and everything. Um, so let's dive right in. So let's go first to the global. So I have four um, button pages that I use. And um, and then this is, uh, that just allows you to choose what your device is, the model, and then the button page, and then current set list, um, and what not. So, um, and then I have it set to, if I tap the, a button, my preset, you can see it tells you what that is right there. Um, it basically reloads the preset I'm on. Um, so sometimes, like, I'll, I'll need to reload something. I might change a delay mix or something on my little um, my little mini expression knob or something, and then I might want to just reset that. Um, then I, that's how I do that is just have it reload. You can do this. You can set up this differently. If, say, you wanted to go, go to a global patch, you can do that, an alternate patch, an IA. Um, I just find this more useful for me uh, to just reload my patch. Um, so I don't really use the rest of this stuff over here. Um, so let's move on to actually, well, I do use one function switch, and that is for my um, my delay pedal, my memory man. We'll get to that in a second. Um, so let's go to devices. So I've got my timeline, Big Sky, HX Stomp, Pog2 all set up through MIDI. So basically I can tap a button and essentially all four of these can do something different if I need them to. Um, so that's really cool. I'm really, um, uh, well, well, let's go to the timeline. So look at that. I've got all this stuff set up. Um, for whatever I need. Um, Big Sky is kind of the same thing. HX Stomp, I don't send redundant PCs or any of that. POG2, it doesn't have, I don't really have m much options for the POG2 because I modded it myself. I uh, actually had some friends help me mod it, and so that is not actually in their list of, ef of effects. So you have to just do general. Uh, PC, CC device, and then I believe the preset, uh, the MIDI channel is automatically set to one on there, so you can't change that. Um, and then, but you can on your um, other MIDI devices. So I've got POG2 set to one, HX Stomp three, and then two, one, or four. <laughs> Timeline used to be one until I modded my POG and then had to change that to four. Uh, all right, cool. Let's go on to the buttons page. So here's my first button page. Um, I've got um, this first button right here, this loop setup mode. Basically, if I tap this, I can view my, I view this page. And um, th I'm talking about my physical mastermind. If I if I tap this button, then it brings me to this page, which is all of my effects um, just laid out in front of me. And I can see, so I'm, say I'm on a certain preset of a song, and I wanted to see what pedals I had on in that preset. I just tap that button, brings me to this page. But let's back up here and go to the rest of these buttons. I have this global preset button to just kind of be a normal um, thing that goes to just a cloud reverb and a dotted eighth delay and um, I think I have, oh, compressor and clon. 
that's just a general preset I use if I need to bump over to something like really quick um, on the fly, maybe a, pr a flow preset or something. Um, I can hit global preset and that's a patch that I know I like and I can just, it can keep it simple. Uh, let's go on to mute. Um, I have this set up to trigger a preset, which is this nothing preset I have here. And basically it's nothing. It's no pedals on. It is timeline and big sky set to zero for mix. Um, so basically what that means is I can hit mute and it turns my trails off or basically it, it acts as if I'm taking the mix knob and bumping it all the way down to zero just instantly. Um, so that's my kind of like master mute sound if I need to kill verbs and delays and or all sound pretty much. So um, I find that useful sometimes for there's a few songs where there's just a really quick stop and I want to just kill everything real quick. Then I hit the mute button. Um, or sometimes if I'm just in rehearsal and we are, you know, say we stop for a second and I've got this really loud patch on, um, then I'll just, that's maybe feeding back or something. <laughs> After we stop, then I'll just hit that mute button and it just takes everything off and uh, makes the sound guys happy. <laughs> So I've got this uh, bank down, bank up switch here um, that cycles through different songs in my set list. Um, and then basically, don't really pay attention to the naming of this. I don't know why it says that. Um, but basically, I'll set it up to say whatever. Um, if this is my you know intro patch, this is, could be my verse patch, chorus, um, whatever. And so move on to page two. This is how I set up my mastermind when I first got it. Um, it I know some of you might think, well, this looks backwards. Um, to me, it, <laughs> the, the, the first way it, it pops up when you load it up with uh, your presets, it, you know, it says this is one, this is two. That seemed backwards to me because my previous, uh, I had a previous looper switch uh, switcher and my signal flow went from right to left so my first pedal in my chain was a pog and then compressor and then at the end of the chain or the left of the chain it was uh you know wet effects and so i just decided to set up my mastermind exactly like that because that's how i'm used to seeing it um, right to left and so i had to kind of re do some of these buttons and re label them to say what I need to. Um, it, it could be kind of confusing if you're looking through this and wondering, Oh, that's button 10, but it's actually, you know, my, um, sixth one in the loop. So at, I, uh, I know it looks confusing, but that just, it makes, uh, it helps me to know what's going on a little better and then my page three uh, I haven't really changed anything here that's just your buffers and uh, in and out I haven't really changed anything there let's go on to um, presets so here is all of my presets you're probably wondering why in the world does he have so many presets on here um, you know what? I used to have even more. <laughs> I used to have this whole thing maxed out all the way to 700 something. I think I had a couple um, blank ones, but uh, as of recently, I tried to pare those down. Uh, but even I still have a lot on here. Um, a lot of these on here are um, really like this big chunk here is. Um, when we did a live recording, um, I wanted to do everything really specific because we weren't going to do any overdubs. And so I made all these patches very specific. As you can see, um, you know, my big sky and timeline, I've, I'm sending the mix CC numbers to be certain things. You know, I, I see I go from there and my timeline changes to 65 
that goes to 55 and then 68. Like there's a really specific stuff that I wanted to keep in here and not delete uh, because whenever I play those songs again at church, I want they want to uh, I want them to sound exactly the same how I recorded them the night of. Um, and so a lot of these other songs that we play at church that um, I you know didn't do for a live recording. Um, that's why I kind of keep these in here because I've over the years of using this, I've I've found that a lot of these patches, I really like how they sound, and I didn't want to have to change or delete anything um, that I, over the years, have known that I s have sounded good. So what I've done is I've compiled about um, f a little over 50 presets of basic stuff that I use. Um, and so I've gone through and deleted all of this um, other random stuff that I didn't need. Um, so like like looking at gain zero, gain one, gain two, basically what that is is I've set up my like typical stuff I would use. So when I went back and deleted some stuff, I found that there was a lot of presets where I only used an overdrive. Um, and so I can, I went in here and just made general presets for gain, you know, first stage gain, second stage, 2.5 stage, you know, <laughs> and I've, I'll go in my song bank and I'll choose all of those and it basically compiles them all together and, uh, to where I don't have to have redundant presets. So that's helped me a lot. Um, I've even done that. So with other presets all basically all of these 50 something presets there could be multiple songs that use these same presets in here um, so just going through these first few ones um, my gain zero is like my super clean tone my sparkle drive um, and compressor uh, basically I'll keep my compressor on probably 90 percent of the time and then my gain for my first stage gain is my Klon. I usually keep that on a lot of the time as well. As you'll see, my gain two is Sparkle Drive just added on the Klon. And then um, gain two point five. <laughs> I've I've kind of found that uh, gain between gain two and three, um, I've needed a couple patches that needed to be a little less than gain three, but a little more than gain two. So I, j I found the middle ground was just um, having just my Del Mar on instead of Sparkle Drive and Klon. And that was my 2.5. <laughs> and then uh, gain three is uh, the Klon in there. Gain four would be just Rat, Compressor, Gain five, way over the top, a ton of gain is Klon and Rat. You notice my turn my compressor off um, because the gain starts to get insane sounding and I don't need an extra thing kind of trying to um, compress my signal and making my signal buzz even more. So um, even a lot of times I'll do that on certain patches and song patches I have the same where I have tons of gain and I'll, I'll turn my compressor off so kind of keep the noise down. And then some of these patches here are um, these gains with chorus on. Um, and then I start getting into, I'll just label these G1, um, gain one, you know, there's my, uh, there's a quarter note delay. And then uh, here's a tube uh, delay from my HX stomp that um, I've set up that I really like. Um, and then, you know, I'll start getting into, um, there's like a, a stacked delay with my um, timeline and HX stomp, like a dotted eighth and eighths that I like. And then I'll get into patches with chorus and delay. And then there's a few with chorus, delay, and reverb. Um, and then the main ones that I use are these ones with just uh, gain, delay and cloud reverb. Um, I use these a ton, especially at 47, <laughs> uh, gain one, clean tone, uh, dotted eighth delay and cloud. Uh, that's, man, I, I feel like I use that a lot 
during church. That clean tone with uh, nice delay and a good reverb. Um, and we'll go down to uh, my 100% wet cloud. Um, this is my, um, this allows me to um, take my dry signal out. As you see, this turns purple. It goes into series. Um, let me talk real quick about series and parallel on how I set that up on my switcher, my mastermind. So I have my two Strymon pedals to be set up in parallel, and that's how I run them all the time um, through my mastermind. My mastermind will be in parallel. And to do, achieve this correctly, you need to be able to turn off your dry signal inside of your Strymon pedals in your timeline in Big Sky. And so uh, you're probably wondering, well, why do you need to do that? And so the reason why is because when you're setting these buttons in parallel, um, that's adding a dry signal in. And so you don't want two dry signals in there because that'll make your sound uh, basically twice as loud or, or somewhere around there. Um, so you don't want that. So I'm basically killing the dry signal from my timeline and Big Sky, and then adding it back in when you're in series. Or sorry, when you're in parallel, you're adding the dry signal back in, and basically it allows you to um, parallel. It's it's it sounds different. Um, I I prefer it. I, I feel like it it cleans up my signal a lot because it's not one of these running into each other. It's not the delay running into the reverb. I mean, essentially it is, but it's as if there's an extra parallel path um, where my signal before that is feeding into both of these, but both of these are not affecting each other in a certain way, if that makes sense. Um, so that's just how I have this set up. Um, if I want to go to 100% wet where I, I kill all dry signal, then I'll, it'll pop over to series. And that's when this little thing turns purple. That's what have, how I have it set up. Um, just to help, helps me to remember when my dry signal's gone, if it's purple. Um, so that is how I set that up for doing 100% wet reverb um i don't really do 100 percent wet delay i don't really need find that useful at least right now um for that so but i i can add it in there if i need to uh, on the fly and um, so basically that's how i set up those two strymon pedals for series and parallel um and let's go on to some other patches um that i might use um let's go to like a typical lead and rhythm song that i can find uh let me look uh no wonder that's a good uh song that has good rhythm parts good lead parts so here's a song no wonder that i have set up um i typically try to set up uh, half and half rhythm and lead patches um, if I can. Um, but also, you know, every song looks different, um, so that's fine. This song just happens to be split evenly. Um, I've got three lead, three rhythm. So for this song, you know, I'm doing, I'm just barely changing my um, reverb, as you can see. Uh, and then I've got my buttons. So let's see, going into this chorus um, or intro into chorus or through chorus, I've got this same tone and then uh, the verse tone. I add a little bit of extra drive and I think I bumped my reverb up one number <laughs> like that did in any difference. <laughs> I don't know why I set that up. Um, I don't know. Maybe that one number just did something for me. Um, so then instrumental, I go to my third stage gain. Um, and you're probably wondering, well, why is he, uh, why did he not just use his basic presets on there? Um, yeah, maybe I could have, but 
for some reason I get, I like to keep this one because 56 just hit really well with this song. That was the perfect amount of reverb for that song. Um, and I didn't want to delete it for some reason. Um, so yeah, this, this is a good example of a song, um, that I can pop over and show you, um, which, what, what song was that? Oh, No Wonder. So the song No Wonder, right here. Basically, I've got six buttons available um, on my switcher in front of me to um, basically six buttons I can recall a preset on. Um, you can set up more if you want to, um, but as you saw on my buttons page, I keep my song presets right here, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, and then bank up, bank down. Um, you can change all this. Say I wanted to get an external switcher like here and and gain two more presets switches right here. I could change that if I wanted to. I could change all of these to have, you know, I could have 10 presets on here if I wanted to. Um, but I found that six will do me just well. <laughs> will get me through a song. So when I'm setting up my songs, I'll go here and I'll make the song in my song pat or my song bank here. I'll go over to the bottom here and I'll um, type in the song name here and then I'll type in the tempo and then drag it alphabetical order to wherever I need it to. Um, as you can see, I've alphabetized everything in here. It's definitely helped me a lot um, with knowing where I'm at, especially if I'm on the fly on, you know, tapping pedals on, you know, during a rehearsal or something, trying to figure out where is this song at? I can't find it, um, which I didn't have that set up the first time I set it up. But I figured that uh, this is very, uh, this is a lot more useful and having it in alphabetical order. I can recall a song on the fly um, during rehearsal if something changes pretty quickly. So, um, yeah, going over to set lists. Um, if I am, you know, playing a Sunday, I'll go over here, I'll find my songs that I wanna do for that Sunday or, you know, what, whatever we're doing. And this is the last set we did. Um, I like to keep a flow patch and a speaker intro patch um, at the end in case um, we need to flow um, during a set list. Um, our typical flow is we will flow at um, 80 BPM. Um, a lot of times I'll put this at the beginning if I know beforehand that we, well, if this will move for me, there we go. <laughs> if I know beforehand that we're, the pastor's going to come up before the set list and he's going to do a little intro, a little welcome, and we're going to have a little chill flow behind him at, uh, at our, you know, tempo, 80 BPM, I have that set ready to go. We can flow and then I'll queue up the next song. We'll go right into our set list. Um, or vice versa, if we want to flow after the set list, um, I can do that as well. I can just put this wherever I need to. Also, I like to keep a blank slot in here somewhere. Um, usually, I would like to keep it after number four or maybe after number three. Just in case, um, during rehearsal, say that the worship leader wanted to tag something, tag a, a part of a different song, or maybe even go to a different song. Um, you know, maybe rehearsal, we decided we wanted to do that, and I didn't know that beforehand. Then I like to keep this open, so I can go in here, and if I wanted to use a patch or a, from something from a different song that we uh, happen to be going into, I can recall that. And it just makes it easy for viewing on the physical mastermind itself because 
there's no way to drag and drop stuff um, with the buttons on the physical mastermind. But if you have a blank slot here, um, when you're looking at your mastermind and set list mode, um, it kind of just skips over that um, and you can't see it. But when you go to edit your patch, it's still there or edit your set list, sorry. It, it pops up. And so say we wanted to do that song, say we wanted to go into Jesus Paid It All at the end, then I can just go on my switcher and tap, you know, cycle through those songs and select it. And it doesn't, or it makes it to where I can just easily recall that and uh, not have to reorganize this stuff and, and miss, you know, about <laughs> three to five minutes of rehearsal after, you know, reorganizing everything. Um, so I like to keep some blank stuff um, in there periodically. I can, you know, honestly, you could keep a blank one between each song. Um, I know it might look kind of crazy viewing on here, but it would allow you to basically interchange a song if you needed to um, and wouldn't mess your order up. So say they wanted to change the song one to alive. Um, honestly, I could do that just by selecting that song. That's the easiest way to do it. But say they wanted to add an extra tag of a song after song one or before song two. Let's say they wanted to do as you find me a uh, chorus or something before that, then I could pop that in right there and not have to reorganize the whole thing and mess up my flow um so that's what i like to do um that's that's actually a really good idea um keeping those blank slots there let's move on i don't use that page um uh, macro i have a the only thing i use that for is this uh for the function switch that goes out to my um memory man for tap tempo uh to send tap information to uh, my memory man to keep that in tempo with the song. Um, oh, one thing I forgot to mention on presets uh, that's really cool are songs. Okay, so say I wanted to change the um, tempo of um, a song within the song. So um, I know our song uh, that... Uh, I play one moment, it has tempo changes in it. Um, so, as you can see, if I'm on my songs page, the song itself, one moment, is set to, the tempo is set to preset. So, that means I can, easy way to find your preset, by the way, is um, click on the songs and then click it right here and just kind of cycle through until you see it pop up whoop oh, there it was so it's number 434 so I go to presets 434 find that oh, whoop. 434 so check this out so this song starts at 72 beats per minute and um, whenever it changes tempo on this instrumental and bridge, it goes to 73 beats per minute. Um, and then this big bridge, it goes to 74. Um, so that's a cool little function to have. Um, so basically you can, you know, go to your song tab, set that to a preset. When you uh, go to your presets, you can type in your tempo per preset save that that's a really cool function to use um, if you've got tempo um, automation for a song um, let's pop over to MIDI um, a MIDI bank uh, MIDI forward um, is a cool thing that um, allows you to um, or at least how I have it set up is um, I have a MIDI loop set up on my board where I can plug in um, all of, I have my MIDI out going to all my pedals and then uh, basically I have this um, this little MIDI box that allows you to um, 
branch out to multiple devices and then um, I can come back in to my mastermind. Um, and then basically it creates a loop where I can use um, a or the um, USB uh, output on my um, mastermind and plug into my computer. Um, and actually I have, uh, I bought a little USB hub, just a basic Amazon USB hub where I uh, can plug up my um, HX stomp or let's go to my devices. So I've got my timeline, Big Sky, all run through MIDI cables and then same for HX stomp. But the editor only allows you, like if you want to go the editor for HX stomp, you can only view that through um, USB. And so I plug in the, um, so I do my MIDI loop through Timeline and Big Sky, go back into the Mastermind, and then the USB out goes to my little um, USB hub, and then my HX Stomp is plugged into that USB hub as well. And then basically that USB hub goes out to my computer, and I can view all three devices all at once and make changes to them um, just by one cable. So that's a, a really cool function, and that's helped me a ton with, um, you know, if I want to change stuff on the fly or if, um, during rehearsal or something, or maybe I have a really long rehearsal, uh, especially like those uh, <laughs> songs that I was talking about where I, uh, that, that we have, uh, that I've uh, played on albums and stuff, and we have long album rehearsals, and I just keep my laptop set up and make adjustments for stuff that needs to change and that's pretty much how I set up everything on here the audio uh, page that's I don't really use that um, that's pretty much everything on on how I set up my mastermind uh, let me know if you got any questions guys and um, I'll try to answer them thanks for watching